So now I'd like to bring in uh, a couple of people that are going to help join us in, uh, in explaining the technology of uh, the banner jam detection sensor. I've got our subject matter expert here, Bob Bergskart. He's going to go through some of the technical aspects of our sensor. And then I'm going to bring in Rick Argo. Rick is a part of our material handling team. Uh, he's going to talk about some applications where we can find some uh, valuable use for this sensor. So Bob, why don't you go ahead and take it away and talk to us a little bit about the banner Q5X jam detection sensor. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, Scott. Hope everyone's doing well out there. So like Scott said, today we're going to talk about Banner's new jam detection sensor. That's this little device right here. It's an all-in-one unit. What we actually did was we took one of our smart sensors, built some special software for it, built an all-in-one solution for detecting jams that's faster, more reliable than normal jam detection methods. So before we go there, it's probably important to review current jam detection methods and some of the problems that come along with them. If you look right here, this is just a basic photoelectric sensor. Everybody's familiar with conveyor lines and sorters and stuff like that, material handling operations, whether you're running you know, e-commerce, logistics, distribution centers, whatever the case may be. You have a lot of photoelectric sensors all over the place. Now, when you're using a photoelectric, a lot of people call them a jam photo eye. You're basically looking for two items to go past the sensor, and there needs to be a gap in between those items so that the sensor can see that there's package flow occurring on the conveyor. Now you saw this light here change state, that just means that the sensor sees something in front of it. Now, the problem becomes in uh, very, I'd say a lot of modern operations where you don't have the luxury of having a gap in between the packages, okay? So we call that continuous flow, and it causes a lot of problems for traditional jam detection methods. So, of course, you'll see here, as I move multiple boxes past at the same time, that light never changes because the sensor doesn't see a gap in between the packages. So common methods to overcome this issue of not having a gap between the package is to add what most people call a jam delay timer. So this sensor goes into a controller somewhere and that controller is going to have maybe a 10, 20, I've even heard of a 30 second on delay timer before it flags a real jam. Well, that's one way to overcome the issue. The problem is, of course, what happens when you have a real jam? A real jam occurs, and now you've got up to a 30-second delay before somebody is actually notified that there's a problem. And so, of course, when you're running several hundred feet per second, or sorry, when you're running several hundred feet per minute on a conveyor, that adds up really quickly, and things get backed up extremely fast. So what did we do to overcome that problem of being able to see in continuous flow situations if it's good or if we have a jam state? That's where the Q5X from Banner steps in. The Q5X from Banner actually uses our dual mode technology where it's looking at intensity and distance to determine if there's packages flowing in front of it. So you'll notice that while the standard photoelectric thinks that there's a jam, that light is on, uh, when these three boxes are moving end to end, I'll do it one more time just so you can see, the Q5X knows that there's no problem there. And I'll demonstrate that the Q5X is actually able to see a jam when a real stoppage occurs. So after three seconds, we're going to get this light to turn on because it says, hey, there's a jam. I don't see any movement. No problem. Or actually, there is a problem. Now, if I continue, if the, if the jam is cleared, I begin to move again. The Q5X automatically resets, and it knows that there's packages flowing down the conveyor again. So again, what this is allowing us to do, it's allowing us to uh, reduce the amount of time it takes to acknowledge a real jam. And then it also increases the reliability of our jam detection methods. So with that said, I think now's a good time to bring in Rick Argo. And we're going to talk about uh, some customer applications and what he's uh, been doing with, with people out in the field. So again, introducing everyone to Rick Argo. Uh, Rick's one of our strategic account executives, works in the material handling industry. Rick, what are some common places where jams occur um, in uh, a material handling application? Thanks for having me, Bob. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, that is actually going to be dependent upon you know the size of the facility. Uh, if it's a distribution fulfillment, uh, if it's a sortation uh, center, depends on the amount of volume that's going to be moving through that facility. Is it going to be 15,000 uh, capacity, 30,000 capacity, 100,000, even greater? Um, obviously, the more volume, the greater the pain point. Sure. So some of common pain points are where you have merge points, other conveyors merging into a main in-feed conveyor, uh, power curves, sortation loops, 
uh, bulk collection conveyors, uh, and possibly recirculation conveyors. So uh, those are some of the, your examples for applications. Now, you've had customers who've actually, uh, you know, th these are, these are a, a lot of times legacy sites that have been up and running for years, mm -hmm. right? They go in and they actually swap out photoelectric sensors and put in a banner jam detection sensor. Is that, what's that process like for them? Is that pretty easy? Well, that's the beautiful thing about our solution. The ease of setup is a one-piece solution. Just like a standard retro-reflective sensor, uh, only you don't have to deal with a reflector. Um, so the installation is pretty simple. It's set it up on the opposite end of the rail. Um, the sensor's aiming at the uh, opposite end of the rail for distance. It's a one-touch setup, so it's that simple. So Rick actually touched on a couple of things that I forgot to mention in the when I was talking about the technology. This sensor does not require a reflector. In fact, it does not uh, require any kind of background whatsoever here. We just happen to have a back rail on our conveyor for demonstration purposes. So you can use it in either one of those modes. Uh, the sensor can also look across a two meter or you know about six and a half foot uh, distance. So it can accommodate a pretty wide conveyor bed. I don't think, we haven't had any issues right now accommodating different uh, sides of conveyors that mm -hmm. are out there. So uh, Rick, you you talked about where this thing's used, you know, those merge points, those power turns, places where there's a lot of problems with boxes getting jammed up. Um, what about, uh, you know, what, what have been some of the customer success stories? Are they saving time? Are they, uh, you know, is it is it just freeing up resources? And what's going on out there? What are you hearing from people? The common uh, theme is, False jams. Okay. So, uh, in fact, we had one customer uh, tell us after a few months of uh, having our solution on board in their facility in a number of spots, mm -hmm. uh, they were able to actually reduce their false jams by 93%. That's a pretty impressive number. Yeah. I would say so. Um, awesome. So, I guess with that said, I think we're going to probably kind of wrap this thing up. All right, thank you gentlemen for going over the Q5X jam detection sensor. You can tell that there's a lot of uh, applications, a lot of problems that we can solve. In downtime, man, that's the key. If we can eliminate a little bit of that with the false, uh, eliminating some of those false jams, the sensor can pay for itself in a very short amount of time.